I said, so why don't you just buy her a really nice gift and we take it to her or you take it to her, take her to dinner and, um, and give her her gift, you know, really nice graduation gift. If you feel so strongly about going. And he told me, I wasn't asking. Right. I was just telling you. Right. Right. That really made me feel some kind of way. You know, even now, I mean, I know that, I mean, we're not, we're not married. I don't have a ring from him. Mm -hmm. So who am I to say that he can or cannot go? Right. I'm sure some people were probably wondering that same very thing. And I had to really sit back and think, am I being selfish? Because he even said to me, well, think about it with you and your stepmother. Y'all are still very close. Um, that is, I don't even say stepmother. I call her my other mother. I call her mom. Right. I, when I, when we're together, you know, I love my mother, but when I'm with my stepmother and we're out, I introduce her to people as my mother. She's my mom, you know? And even though after 27 years of marriage with her and my dad, they're now divorced. He told me it's the same situation. Well, how? I don't see, I don't see it. Right, right. You know, but he also told me that he's the only father figure that this little girl knew. He had been in her life for like 10 years or whatever. She's 18. So, you know, eight, 10 years, something like that. He had been in her life. But I just wasn't comfortable with him going over to that woman's house. Yeah, I mean, and, and we and spoke about this. And it left a really this. bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, we spoke about this. And you really, you really don't have much leverage in the situation because he is technically still married. He is technically still married. And, uh, well, that's why I say, let me know if you're married or not. If I want to deal right. with that, I don't want to deal with that. Right. If yeah. you got a crazy baby mama, I mean, I have children. My kid's father's not going to give nobody no grief, you know, because he's married. Right. He's doing his own thing. But for me, I don't want to deal with nobody that's married or got a crazy ass baby mama. Yeah. Because I'm not that crazy baby mama. I don't want to deal with somebody. That, I don't. That's drama. I don't like drama. Yeah. Mess. Yeah. So let's go back to uh, your type. I have I have this theory. And uh, okay. it's not it's not a theory I I uh, came up with. It's it's a it's not a new theory, but it's called the womb imprint. And what that is is uh is 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 believed that the first one or three uh, the first three one or three lovers a woman has can imprint her womb. And basically bind their souls together where uh, it messes with her psyche and that becomes her type. No matter if she's with men later on in life, one of, one of three of these men she's, she's been with first in her life has imprinted her womb. Uh, now she can come back there from, a, from healing, from cleansing, a renewal of mind and spirit, but it's believed She'll always, until she does that, she'll always be drawn to that type. And uh, that's very important also for women who have been molested or raped, and they don't know why they're attracted to a certain type. And it can go back to that. But even aside from rape or molestation, just a, a normal sexual relationship, a lot of women, is believed, can have their womb imprinted where they're drawn to this type. And, I mean, they may be successful, Fortune 500 CEOs, but they're drawn to this thug because that is one of three of their first lovers. Well, what do you think about that? When you look on your own life, you don't have to reveal your type, but when you think about the first three lovers in your life, do they resemble your type? Yes. 